first saw you in class, I was attracted to you. You were full of light and positive energy. You had an entertaining demeanor with a kind smile. But it turns out I got lucky on my first try at a relationship because you were gentle and patient with me. When we're on a long drive and we just sit in silence, and I know it's not awkward, it's just peaceful, and the whole world seems to quiet down, which, by the way, never happened to me before I met you. That's romance. I want you, I want us, the way we are now, lounging on the couch in our little house in the woods, me humoring you when you want to watch sports or wrestling, and you humoring me when I go on at length about the latest Taylor Swift drama. <laughs> that, to me, is better than any Nora Roberts novel that's ever been written. in my life, the poet James Wright wrote. He was talking about one tiny moment of perfect peace and joy. He was talking about being aware in the moment that he was happier than he'd ever been before. He knew in that moment that every moment up until that moment had paled in comparison. This, my dear Beth and Phil, is your perfect moment. And it's a perfect moment for all of us lucky enough to witness it. Let's hold this moment in our hearts. I first met Beth and Phil when they were graduate students in the MFA program at Chatham University. I loved them both first as individuals. Beth, the spunky, outspoken, funny, and kind sweetheart of any workshop class. Phil, the quiet, introverted, and intense, thoughtful student whose empathy for others was so heartfelt and palpable. There was an Altoid. <laughs> Beth and Phil, two opposites who would balance one another in the most beautiful way, met each other when they ended up in my class together. It was an Altoid. <laughs> you are my friend, my partner, and especially after today, you're my family. I vow to always love you in the vault and on the earth. In early June, we rode together to the state of New York to attend Chautauqua Writers Festival, where our memoir professor, Lori Jaquila, was one of the lead organizers. During that trip, we went on our first Sheets run. <laughs> you, were <laughs> you were the DJ and I was the driver, and perhaps you were nervous about our one-on-one -on -one time in the car. But to me, even then, I knew at the very least you were someone who I wanted to go on adventures with. I promised to be a good dog dad to our puppy, Walter. <laughs> And if children are in our cards for the future, I vow to be a good father who makes responsible financial decisions. I promise to honor you as an individual within the circle of your family. That the rest of the song, it just sounds like forever. It's, it's kind of timeless and you can be lofted up into these very high places. Eventually you start wake, waking up to the fact that you might be ready to spend the rest of your life with somebody and still feel good about who you are and what kind of changes you're going to go through, no matter what. And Beth Rest is that reward. It's that place you get to be for the rest of your life. When the world hardens my heart, pry it open with your love. When you, when you need me to be there for you, I pry it open with my love. May the lyrics pry it open with your love serve, serve as a reminder of the unconditional love that we have for each other and our willingness to try and overcome any obstacles. May we find rest in the arms of each other as we traverse hand in hand into the wild, mysterious future. I always say you're the best partner when I'm in crisis, and I'm often in crisis. <laughs> <laughs> you handle my anxiety and my drama so gracefully. You helped me figure out how to use my legs. And in the process, I've grown as a partner, but also as a person in ways that I never thought I would. I'm so grateful to you. I promise to keep our kind of romance alive, the boring, non-romantic stuff that we do best. I promise that I will love your family as my own. 
and treat them with the care, respect, and kindness that they have always shown me. I promise to raise children, both human and canine, <laughs> in whole partnership with you. I promise to keep our little world sacred, the private, quirky, cozy one that we have worked so hard to build together. I love you so much, Philip. I can't wait to keep building our world together. I, Philip Pierce Geist. I, Philip. I, Philip Pierce Geist. <laughs> Take you, Elizabeth Royce. Take you, Elizabeth Royce. To be my wife. To be my wife. I, Elizabeth Royce. I, Elizabeth Royce. Take you, Philip Pierce Geist. Take you, Philip Pierce Geist. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to love you wholly. I promise to love you wholly. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. All of the days of my life. Elizabeth, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And life together. And life together. Philip, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And life together. And life together. With the support and love from your family and friends, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. You may kiss your husband. <laughs> Phil and I are cut from different cloth. <laughs> Phil is a bit ultra modern and I am more old fashioned. Phil has a chronological memory and can look at a picture and tell you what year it was taken and probably what concert he had just gone to. <laughs> Beth, when I first met you, I noticed your charisma. Your warm, genuine, welcoming presence shined through the nervousness that you may have felt meeting our family for the first time. I knew very quickly that you were someone that I felt complimented my brother well, and that I could see you loved him for who he is. And there was a memorable lesson that Phil taught me. We were on our way home, or we were on our way from our home in Tipton to La Trobe to see one of our favorite bands. 45 minutes into the trip, I realized that I had forgotten my ticket. Rather than get upset with me, and let my error impact the trip, he simply said, well, we'll just have to go back and get it. And that's what we did. <laughs> Phil, you taught me in that moment that when you love something, you don't let obstacles stand in your way. You move forward and you find a way. Beth, I'm sure you have seen the Geist sub stubbornness come out at times <laughs> as persistence and as obstinance. It's in our blood. <laughs> I pray that when times get tough for you both, that you remember that at the end of the day, none of those little insignificant things matter. You will forget things, misplace things, be late to things, and it will not matter. All that will matter is that you recognize that the love you have for each other knows no bounds. Phil and Beth, I love you both. Work together as one, love, cherish, give grace and support to one another and share the pen in writing the story that is your life together. <laughs> to Phil and Beth. We wanted to hang out together all the time, and obviously still do based on our phone records. When we were kids, Beth and I often got into trouble for sneaking into each other's rooms instead of sleeping in our own beds. Agony! <laughs> Even when we weren't all together all the time, we still found time to choreograph dances in the car, sing like we were on Broadway, make up games or secret clubs, or just laugh until we cried over anything. We met Phil about six or seven years ago. One thing that we love about Phil is how he finds something in common with everyone. We found it very easy to connect with this complete stranger many years ago over the OC, fantasy football, Blink-182, or college basketball. But our favorite thing in common was Beth. We are so lucky to have someone in the family who allows us into their home. 
We're so happy that you found each other. So a toast to the groom, to the bride, from your sisters who are always by your side. <laughs>